Hello! Welcome to the stream! On a lovely Taco Tuesday, which is hopefully a good Taco Tuesday for you. And welcome on in. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Sierra, how you doing? Glad you could make it. Same for you, Gravelion. Nice to see you here as well. Upgraded Ost Soul. Well, I can't say that I like your choice of mechs, but I do appreciate that you've decided to join us on uh, Ye Olde Purple streaming site. I do remember you from the YouTubes. So welcome to what I assume is your first live stream. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, so yeah, we are here again today in the old BTA. We're going to continue our campaign today. Um, I tell you what, though, it's so a couple of days ago, the first cold front finally blew through my area. And I am, I don't know if it's the weather or what, but every year I kind of get caught off guard by, by the first major cold front. And I'm feeling a little like, I don't know, my throat's a little scratchy. You know how it is. But anyway. We're, we're, we're going to make it happen like we always do, so no worries there. Uh, I did also want to let you guys know, because um, this, you know, obviously we, we had the Sunday stream and announced the whole news about, um, you know, we made affiliate and all the stuff that comes along with that. So I did want to give you guys a heads up. I did actually put together the first extremely low effort emote for you guys. Um, and I did also do some sub badges for you and a couple of other things. So I have been working over the last couple of days on trying to get some of the channel stuff put together. Yes, yeah, Sierra, it's, this happens to me every year and it's probably got something to do with the fact that I have a little bit of a tradition. So I, I've said this before, but for those of you that don't know, I live in Texas, and Texas has uh, two seasons, hot and not quite as hot. Um, and as a direct result of that, every year when the first major cold front blows through, assuming that the weather's not bad, I always like to go outside and just stand there and let it hit me. Let that first big rush of cold air come in, the first big cold front of fall, and... Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's, I did that again this year. And I wonder sometimes if that's not the reason that every year I always feel a little rough. Or it could just be because I didn't sleep under a blanket last night and maybe gave myself a cold. So who knows? I, I don't know. But again, I'm going to power through. It's fine. I'm not going to die. At least not today. I mean, everybody's got to die sometime, but. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't too far. I'm not too far from Lackland now, but uh, then again, Texas is, I, and I like to make this joke. I forget who I heard it from, but somebody had made the joke that Texas is the only state in the U.S. where you can drive six hours in every direction and still be in Texas. And that is, that is the truest thing I think I've ever heard about the state. Um. But yeah, at any rate, I um, think that's all the announcements that I had as far as, again, the emotes and the sub badges and all that fun stuff. You may have to enable them uh, if you were here before we actually got affiliate. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I did do a little bit of a Battletech theme. And speaking of Battletech, let's head on over to the game so we can get started. Keep you guys waiting for too long. So here we are, which, uh, you know, again, for any of you that have been here for a little while, this screen is going to look very, very familiar. It should, anyway. And uh, yeah, we're right where we left off with uh, several folks laid up in the hospital bed, but we got a decent chunk of change. And that's actually something that I wanted to bring up. So somebody over on the YouTubes had made a suggestion that I didn't even think about. And maybe you guys can help me with this. So somebody had suggested that we head to Merchant's Rest. And the reason that I hadn't tried to do it, at least yet, is because we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, for the longest time, we were kind of just hovering around a million C-bills or so and didn't really have much money to play with. Um, 
But now that we've actually got some money and we can afford to do some travel, I was thinking about going to Merchant's Rest, but I found a problem and I don't know what it is. Uh, speaking of problems, let's actually enable the Battletech audio today. What do you say? Maybe maybe let's not go two hours before I realize that uh, that you guys aren't getting audio. So here's my problem. And you can see we're up here in Capellan space, which I'm not thrilled about, but Merchant's Rest should be right about here. But it isn't. And I don't know why. And I don't know, because I have played BTA and I have gone to Merchant's Rest before. I am aware of it. And I was really weirded out because, yeah, this empty spot right here is where Merchant's Rest should be. But it's not there. And I couldn't find anything in patch notes for BTA about it being removed or anything like that. So I'm kind of like, I, I'm a little weirded out. I don't know if it's a bug or if there's some event that needs to trigger before it shows up. But uh, yeah, so I, I was hoping maybe one of you guys in chat would know what's going on, but... I, I have not, Miguel. I have not heard any, any souls screaming out in pain before suddenly being silenced. So I don't think that's what it was, but you never know. I, I mean, the these Oregon Coalition folks are apparently the new Mary Sues of the Battletech setting, at least according to this game. Um, so yeah, and, and I'm right there with you, uh, so I, I My assumption is that there's some event or something that needs to happen before that actually shows up. But at the same time, we've kind of been slowly trying to get out of the periphery and get farther in system. So um, what I was thinking about doing is there's another place that we could go, a little place called Outreach, way, way out here in the middle of the galaxy. And that place is the Wolf's Dragoons area where they have a whole bunch of stuff for sale. So that's an option. The only problem is a lot of the planets around here are a lot tougher than what we would be able to handle at this point. So we would kind of be locked into outreach and any other lower difficulty planets in the area. Again, it's going to be pretty expensive, but we've got a little over 4 million sea bills. So if we were ever going to take a really long trip to outreach, now would be probably be the best time to do it, in my opinion. Uh, yes, Gravel Lion, there is, in fact. So if you're in the map, like we are right now, if you hit Control F, just like you would in any Windows thing, up here it'll give you the system search, and you can search either by the planet name, or you can even search by criteria. So like, if I want to search for Outreach, it'll show me Outreach. And this, I think, is a bug where it shows you the flashpoints, but it'll highlight any planet that has outreach in the name, in the description, anything like that. Um, additionally, like if we wanted to search for the black market, I could put in black. And it's going to show me every planet that has a black market. Now, of course, we don't actually have access to the black market currently. But, uh, but yeah, so the, the search function is actually super handy. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, we could do that, and and it, I, I'm I'm right there with you, Gravelion, because I think our biggest ticket to getting anywhere is gonna be getting our hands on some clan tech, because clan tech is basically cheat codes. So the sooner we can get our hands on clan tech, the sooner we'll be able to again start punching above our weight. Um, I, and honestly, us so I'm not a huge fan of the whole Solaris thing in the game. I just feel like it's not fully fleshed out. But here's the thing, though, and this is important, because one of the things that I've been doing since Friday, the last time that we streamed BTA, is I actually fired up the game and was doing a little bit of fiddling in the mech bay to see what kind of designs I could put together. And I wanted to show you guys, because I have an idea, I just don't quite have all the parts that I need to make it work. So let, let me show you. Um, so currently, we have the same five mechs that we've been using for a little bit, but we just got this hunchback last go-around. So on the last stream, we finally got this, and that's great. Um, with that being said, 
we wanted to do some crazy stuff with this. And and Sierra, you were here. We were spitball, and we were we were throwing everything at the at the wall to see what sticks. And yes, the the double AC twenty was the temptation. However, here's my idea, and I. So let's go ahead and strip the equipment, and I'm gonna do restore. Cause oh no, I have to I have to validate this first. And it's ten grand down the hole, but I want to show you guys. Actually, you know what? I I'll do it the hard way. But here's my thinking. Here's my thinking. What we have right now in terms of weapons, we know that the medium rifle, the medium cannon are not great. But I have two medium cannons. Now, a medium cannon by itself is not that big a deal because it's a one-shot weapon, right? But you look at it, it's 24 damage times 10 shots. It's basically a, an, an LBX with the shotgun attachment. Now, the issue with these is we don't have the cannon loader to actually be able to, ro to, to reload these guys. But... Here's the thing. We have in here, I've got some Perfury FCSs to increase the accuracy, right? We can do that. And all we need at that point is instead of a rocket ammo feed, if we had the cannon ammo feed, if I could find two of those, we stick them both in here. I've already got cannon ammo. Like I, I have rifle ammo, um, medium rifle ammo. So we could potentially do this and then max out the armor. And of course, there I need to put an engine core in here and do this, but this is effectively the design that I came up with. And my intention was to put in a slightly upgraded engine core. Um, I was thinking either a 220 or a 240, just to give it a little bit more reach so that we can run right up on people. But basically, this is two LBX-10s and just doing a test and I did actually do a little cheating so that I could give myself the reloading um, stuff but this basically turns it into a double shotgun sway bag and I was I was destroying people in single duel missions so that that's the idea that I had and I don't know how effective it will be under normal circumstances like in a, a, in a typical mission setting but uh, yeah this is I think this absolutely qualifies as Hunchback Heresy, if we make it work. But for right now, I mean, you can see, it's going to be very expensive to do this to the mech. But at the same time, I think it would be a lot of fun. And it's it's perfectly in keeping with the spirit of the Hunchback, right? The If you're not driving up into somebody's face and pulling the trigger, then are you really hunching correctly? Um... So yeah, and, and with this, we can basically ditch heat sinks because we won't need them. Uh, we might even be able to put jump jets on this thing and give it even more mobility. So, I, you know what, Graveline? If we can make this work, I will absolutely... I, I won't call it the Rifleman. I will call it the Rifle Chad because that's what it will be at that point. But uh, yeah, so that's... That's my my idea. We just need a couple more parts to make it work. Game Master, welcome back. Good to see you. I see you found the new emote. I will be working on more, by the way, for you guys. That was just the, the first one that I could throw together quickly. But anyway, so I think... And you guys stop me if you think I'm wrong. Uh-oh. Careful, guys. We got ghosts in chat. But I think we had to outreach. Like I said, it's going to be expensive. It's going to take us a little while. But if we were ever going to do it, I think now is the time to do it. So speak now or forever hold your peace. Because we're about to head to outreach. Yep, moon's haunted. Sorry. All right, well, no major objections. Here we go. No backing out now. Roger that, Commander. Course plotted. And this this will have the additional benefit of helping get the remainder of our people a little closer to being out of the hospital. Um, so I, I think it's a good move all around. All right, let's see. 
What do we got? Demoralized. Game Master approaches you on the mess deck. Commander, you know how Bigfoot is sidelined in Med Bay? I've been visiting them, trying to keep their morale up, and well, they're really messed up. They think the injury was their own fault. Maybe you could do something. Resting a hand on Game Master's shoulder, you say, Thanks for letting me know, Game Master. I'll see what I can do. Uh, of course, of course, I'm gonna go visit Bigfoot in the Med Bay. Why would I not? I, I am absolutely the kind of boss that will go and talk to people, so. Later in the day, you arrive in the med band, find Bigfoot in bed, just staring at the ceiling. Hey, Commander, I didn't expect you to come by. I need you back on your feet, Bigfoot, you say. This, you make a vague gesture at the med bay in Bigfoot's condition. This happens to mech warriors, but it's just bad luck. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I guess so. Good, recover fast, because you've got work to do. Bigfoot cracks a smile. Will do, Commander. And yeah, that's exactly how I would have handled that. Uh, Bigfoot, in, in spite of my ragging on the battle armor, because Bigfoot is our battle armor pilot, you know, that, that, that battle armor has put in some work. Admittedly so. So I, I, I gotta give props where it's due. And speaking of battle armor, I've been thinking about... Um, potentially getting ourselves one of the aircraft for the battle armor to get them into combat a little faster. The only unfortunate part about that is we'll end up having to hire another pilot so that we can put them into the aircraft if we do that. And we're already, we're already shelling out a lot of money for payroll, so I don't know, we'll have to figure something out. I would complain that using a aircraft would take a tank off the field, but considering that the tank in question is a 25-ton scorpion that only ever seems to get off one shot before being blown up, I'd say nothing of value would be lost. Don't get me wrong, I love scorpions. They're great, especially in the early, early game when you don't necessarily have access to something like an Ultra AC-5, but at this point in the campaign, I think it's more of a liability. Um, considering that every time it gets blown up, the pilot ends up in the hospital for six months and becomes completely useless. Got a new financial report for you, Commander. And there's the financials. So in addition to the 300K that we spent for this trip, we're now also dropping 650K on expenses, which is about a million dollars. So, in for a penny, in for a pound at this point. There's no going back. As much as I love the periphery, or periphery, I can words. As much as I love the outer edges, um, I think it's about time we got stuck in. It, it feels that way sometimes, Sierra. It, it does feel that way sometimes. Alright, here we go. Cross your fingers, guys. We're gonna visit the store. This is why we're here. Let's let's see what kind of new toys they've got for us. Hopefully they'll be good ones. Ah. Uh, you know, all on its own, seeing mechs for sale makes me happy. Because we have not had positive enough reputation to really find any mechs for sale yet. So being able to, like, obviously we can't afford any of them. But just seeing that they're available makes me feel good. It makes me feel like, you know, we, we finally made it. We're finally out of the early game. So let's see what we get. I'm really hoping, because I know that Outreach usually has a lot of really cool stuff. I'm really hoping. Please tell me that we can find the cannon loaders. Because that would be just the icing on this cake. Please, please... Machine gun, machine gun FCS. Really? Really? I want a cannon loader. Cannon loader, please. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen, Chet. Dang it. All right, well, it was worth a shot. And besides, an AC-20 hunchback is still fine. I'm not going to turn my nose up at it, but yeah, just looking at this, we got a whole lot of stuff that could be extremely useful. I mean, some piercing SRM ammo, which is great. Um, I don't think we have any piercing um, 
I don't think we have any piercing launchers, but the ammo is here. Ah, uh, man. Yeah, we got all kinds of good stuff here. Light goss ammo, more ammo for, uh, for the auto cannons. Man, look at all these goodies. I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. I mean, we, we could potentially do a party back, but I don't think we can do it with the hunchy that we have. The, the hunchback that we have is all ballistic, but I would love to, like... It, it's one of those things that it's a lot easier to do in the vanilla game than it is to do in, like, BTA. But I would love to, like, oh, yeah, here's 12 small lasers in a hunchback. Or, oh, here's an entire array of heavy machine guns. Get critted to death. Um... So they got a Thunderbolt 5, they've got a Thumper, which we could do- Oh, you know what? Here's an idea. And I know it's- it's the Perfury redneck in me talking, but we got some rocket launchers. If we could find, like, an RL-40, we already have one rocket autoloader. So if- I, like, I don't think it's worth it to do it for an RL-20, because we could just get an MRM launcher for that. But if we could get, like, an RL-40, I would absolutely use that rocket autoloader for it. But, uh, yeah, we got some... Got some good stuff here. Good stuff. Oh, then again. Then again. Inferno RL-15. I don't know if we could use this with a reload, though. Because I know normally the rocket launchers reload with MRM ammo, but since this is Inferno, I don't think that would work. Probably. Uh, but yeah. A lot of goodies for sale, that's for sure. Nothing that we particularly need at the moment, but good to know that we've actually got some options in terms of what we can buy. But I think most importantly, we're now 30 minutes into the stream. Let's say we actually get to blowing some stuff up. How about that? Does that sound good to you guys? What the F? They don't have any missions in Outreach. I am disappointed. Although it's good to see that this one... This is the Santa Claus mission, by the way. Uh, it's good to see that this actually still is here, even though we will have to travel back to the system in order to do it. I mean, do we, I don't think we have anything, I mean, I guess the censure, or I'm sorry, the trebuchet. We could potentially mount rocket launchers on the treb, but then we'd have to ditch the streaks. That That's the, the other reason that I would rather, like, if we could, I want to get, um, I want to get, like, the larger launchers, like the 40s. Because even though we've only got two LRM-10s on the Treb currently, these are streaks, so as long as we get the lock, we'll definitely be able to uh, to put the damage on them. Oh yeah, for sure, Sierra. I'm, I'm all about that meme potential. I mean, why do you think I'm trying to, to find cannon loaders so that I can essentially take two perfiery shotguns and stick them on a hunchback? I, I'm not doing it because it would be effective. I'm doing it because it would be funny. That it also happens to be effective is just a nice side effect. Uh, but I guess we're going to have to navigate to another system, unfortunately, since there are no missions available here. But we can stick around this area just within a few jumps of outreach and then know that we've got access to that store. We'll just have to be a little more choosy about when we actually come back here. Because um, obviously I don't want to waste a bunch of money jumping back and forth every couple of days. So, let's see, what do we got? Uh, Capola, that's, that's a two, or a two skull, we could do that. Could do hull, let's see, who, who do we actually want to work for? Yeah, here on the core, this is, this is probably the best place for us to be, because we've got access to pretty much all of the major players. I mean, we could work for the Blakists. What do you guys think? Who, who do you think we work for? At least to start out, since we just now got to the core. Who who do you think we put our lot in with first? I want to see what you guys think. Because me personally, as long as it's not Capellans, I don't really care. I mean, we could we could work for for the uh the Draconis Combine. We could put in our work for some for some free worlds, you know. We could even go Steiner and start building up our Steiner Scout Squad. 
I mean, I'm even okay with working for the Blakists. Like, doesn't matter to me. Which, speaking of, where is it here? Now, where is... It's right around here. So, you know what? This is what the search function is for. I'm looking for Terra. It's here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. I just can't find it for whatever reason. Well, I, I know Terra is going to be like five skulls anyway, so probably best not to focus on that too much. Like, do they call Terra something else in BTA? Is it not Terra? There it is. Yeah, I don't think Terra is going to be a good move for us because, as you can clearly see, five skulls. That's a little bit outside of our, our weight class currently. But uh, let's see. We got Comstar up here. Um... Actually, I'm not, I'm not entirely opposed to that idea, Sierra. Let's see. Where is Tigris anyway? It's not far. Oof, that's a four skull though. That's that's not a bad long term goal though. Say okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take Tigris from the Capellans by God, and and we're gonna we're gonna do it because of the name. So maybe not, maybe not right now, but eventually. Let's see, what do we get? We got calf. Again, that's another four skull, so a little bit outside of our range. But it's all close by. That's the great thing about the, the core is we, we can go all sorts of famous places. And um, let's see, I'll tell you what, Let, let's do this. Let's just do a skull filter and I'm gonna say, what do we got for two skulls in the area? All right, here we go. So we could go to Brownsville, which is just an abandoned planet. So we're probably not going to find much for for anything there. We've got Capola. Uh, this is TerraCap Confederation. I mean, all right, sure. We could do some work for Merrick on uh, on Sirius. I mean, again, I, I'm a mercenary, Astsol, so I'm I'm not opposed to the idea of working for Capellans. I mean, we were working for Capellans last go around, so you know, it's it is what it is. As long as the sea bills are green, I'll I'll take the job. But I would rather not work for Capellans if I can avoid it, just on general principle. We could go to Keed uh, or or Kaid. I'm not sure how you would pronounce that, but it's only a one skull. And while that wouldn't be a problem for us, I do want to try to challenge ourselves and make sure that we're not like I don't want to take missions that are too easy. So I say, um, I say we do some work for Merrick at least for right now. It's a two skull. It's serious. It's a decent sized planet. So maybe we'll find some uh, some good stuff here. I'm trying to figure out though why is it going to take us 44 days to travel? Is there there's hardly any distance there? That's crazy. Like I I'm genuinely having difficulty figuring out why it's going to take so much longer to get there than it would because like everything else around here it's 10 days. 18 days, 18 days, 18 days, but then we go here and it's like 44 days! Like, what What the hell? So maybe we don't go there. Maybe we go to Pollux instead. Because uh, I, I don't want to spend another 44 days in transit um, just because that's an entire another month that we're not going to be... Yeah, exactly. Like, clearly we're going to get lost in the warp on the way there. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I think we'll do Pollux instead. We're still working for Merrick. Uh, and it's going to take us much less time to get there. Like, the, the one thing that I don't want to do is end up hitting another financial report before we even get an opportunity to do a mission.
we could do that, Asta, but I think at the end of the day, we're still going to be close to 44 days. And even then, if it's going to give us a 44 day travel time, if we try to leave the planet, we're going to have to take the same path to get out of there. So I'd just rather not even mess with it. We'll just try something a little different. I'm not tied to Sirius anyway. It was just, hey, here's a two skull planet. And it's for an employer that we don't mind working for. Um, okay, let's see what we got. So we got an airlift VTOL, 65 tons, but I don't want to spend 1.7 mil on it. We could buy some more battle armor, put, field some more armor. Um, but let's see what they've got in the hold. Auto cannon FCS, which isn't going to work with the, um, with the cannon build that we're trying to do. Got more periphery seat. Periphery. I don't know why I call it periphery. It's periphery. I can words. I promise. Um, but yeah, no luck on the cannon loaders. So that's that's unfortunate. Astol, you're fired. You are fired. Get out. Get out of here. That was terrible. Your dad joke rating is. I don't know. I'm I'm going to give that a 3 out of 10. You can do better. I know you can do better. Yeah, I mean, if we can't find him, then we'll just have to kill someone that has him and take him out of the wreckage. All right, let's see what we got here. So we got a battle in Badlands. This one's probably going to be pretty easy for us. Um, we got a defend base, which I don't really want to do. Those tend to be pretty lengthy missions. Another Badlands battle. This one looks a little tougher. Who are we up against on this one? Oh, I mean, we're working for Blake, but they're asking us to kill Capellans, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Uh, let's see. Another battle in the Badlands. This time they want us to fight mercenaries. Raiding party? Battle in the Badlands for Merrick, and we're fighting the Capellans well. It's like they know me. I think we take this one. Um, we'll do some fighting against the Capellans. I think, as usual, we'll go with Max Salvage, especially in this part of the, of the galaxy. I think we're finally... So, I, I wanted to explain this, too, because I saw some comments on the YouTubes about it, and... And I know that the people that were saying that aren't here now, or probably aren't here now. But I know that there were some folks that were confused about my decision in the early part of the campaign um, to focus on money on missions instead of salvage. And I wanted to explain that because I, I, I always catch flack when I play games like this. Um, when I play Battletech because they're like, oh no, you should always go for salvage. And I disagree in the early game for a couple of reasons, but the primary reason is in the early game, when you're playing against like pirates and local government and all of the mechs are crap and you're doing like half skull missions, the salvage isn't worth the money. So like if they were going to give us 15 pieces of salvage, and even if they were all mech parts, it would still be less than the maximum payout for the mission. Welcome back, Sneaky So. If I'm doing well, hopefully you are too. Um, but yeah, so that, that's why in the early game, I don't really prioritize salvage. Because a lot of times the salvage that you're going to get is not going to match the money that you would get if you max it out. But I think we're now at the point in the campaign where if we focus on salvage, we'll still make more money as long as we sell the stuff that we don't need. So, again, I know that doesn't really apply to any of you folks that are here. I don't remember who it was that had mentioned that in the YouTube's comments, but I just wanted to point that out. Like, it's it's not that I don't know what I'm doing. It's just that, you know, I, I didn't... I maybe didn't do a great job of explaining why I made that decision. Ah, oh, you're good, Sneaky. And hey, you know what? If you're not off in chat, it wouldn't be the first time someone did. Hopefully, uh, I can help you get some rest if you're tired. Oh. I'm not a glorious leader. I'm just the leader that you have. 
Um, but yeah, we're going to thank the scorpion. The scorpion is cursed. And I already preemptively feel bad for Sparrow, who is probably going to get blown up. But here we go. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, Ostsal, is, is to me, it sucks in the early game taking money over salvage, but I think the money is more important in the early, early game because it helps you keep the company going. And it also, especially the big thing for me is by having a lot of money in the early game, it allows you to knock out a lot of the early upgrades for the Argo. So that you can get your mech repair up, you can get your med bay up, you can, well, the galleon is cursed too, so that's that's a fair assessment. Um, but yeah, the having a lot of money in the early game instead of salvage lets you get a lot of your early game upgrades ready for the Argo so that you, you're kind of building your infrastructure early so that you don't have to spend a lot of time and money in the mid game to do all that. And we've already done that. That's the reason that I'm not currently doing upgrades for uh, for the Argo, because we've already knocked out most of the ones that we need for now. And I do see you, Sierra. I see you. I'm taking a drink right now. Out. There we go. Sweet, sweet, delicious water. All right. Well, before we start the mission, let's let's see what Darius's sage wisdom is today. Commander Liao wouldn't send a dropship if they didn't mean business. So if we take this jab, we should stay alert down there. Again. Darius with that clutch advice. Commander Turns out in a war zone, you should stay alert. Oh no, I forgot to attach the battle armor to one of our mechs. Crap. That's okay. That's okay. Now, if only I could remember which mech we have the handholds on. I think it's the Centurion? Let's see. Ah, uh, it does not show me. Dang it. Chet. I forget what how do I view the actual like the full loadout for a mech? If I remember right, there's a button you have to hit for it, but I don't remember what the button is. Do you guys remember? Or am I misremembering? Is that is that not a thing? I guess it doesn't matter. Let's see. Let's see. If I go and let's grab the battle armor and I say, I want you to mount. Yeah, okay, nice. It shows you a little circle on it. Yeah, see, because not only it's giving me the circle on the Centurion because it has handholds, it's also giving me the circle on the APC because it has the compartment. So we're going to go ahead and put it on the, uh, the Centurion because... As we've learned from experience, over rough terrain, the APC is not very speedy. Um, so let's see, we're destroying enemy units, and unfortunately they're going to have some elevation on us if we advance on them. Um, but that's okay. If we play our cards right, I think we'll be okay. I think if we, if we advance to this ridgeline and then don't go down into the valley where the road is, we'll be in good shape. And hell, they may come out to meet us. Who knows? But let's start moving up and we'll see... We'll see how long it takes us to get in contact. Copy that. Yep. On my way. Rolling. And we're just... I'm, I'm gonna You're give very little consideration to positioning. At least for the first couple of turns. Which maybe isn't smart, but let's see. If we move up here, thankfully we do have the Galleon, which is an outstanding scout vehicle. Certainly. S 
slide slip. I'm not familiar with that one. You'd have to explain it, or I may look it up when we actually get back to the barracks. Yeah, I'm, once we actually get closer to the ridge line, I'll definitely spread out. But for right now, I just want to see... As a matter of fact, let's, uh, let's do this. I'm going to grab you. our galleon first. And what... Are you serious? Okay. Well, we might have a problem. I was hoping that we could get down the ridge from here, but it doesn't look like we can. So the only way to get the only way to get our mechs down here into this ridge line is to go this way. So that's unfortunate. Um, I think I'll put the galleon like right here and see if we make contact. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've made contact and they are in the low ground, so this could work to our advantage. Mm, I got you. That's definitely something to look at. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get anywhere that we can actually take shots. We're not going to be able to get in range just yet, but that's okay. Uh, let me... I will move the treb up, and then hopefully we'll be in sensor range. I want to see if we can get a sensor lock on this guy. No, not quite. Dang it. I was hoping we could sensor lock him early and try to figure out what we're up against, but uh, I guess it'll have to wait until maybe next turn. Heading out. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, this is our Hollander. Actually, you know what? I think we can leave the Hollander up here on the ridge. Because this, this is the Hollander with the thumper cannon, so from right here... We'll have decent shots all the way out. We'll, we'll definitely be able to make good shots from this elevation. Um, and then, of course, we move up the Hunchback. I'm there. And let's see. The Hetzer, Game Master with his AC-20. Um, I think we want to get up to, like, right around here with the Hetzer. Because if we can get that AC-20 into I'm the there. trees... Use the cover, like, we would have this whole valley covered. And that AC-20 on an elevated position is going to be devastating. Yes, Commander. Erst! Welcome in! Welcome back! Good to see you! All right, but I'm ready to go. You caught us in time for our first mission of the day. We did spend a little time theory crafting in the mech bay and doing some travel, so uh, thankfully you haven't missed a whole lot in terms of action and explosions just yet. I'm here. So I think we'll go ahead and brace Confirm. up with the battle armor Open since this is our first real turn. Um, Sparrow with the scorpion, again, probably not a great idea to move them up because the scorpion is cursed. But elevation is going to be our friend, so we'll move up into cover. And still no chance. Uh, we got the Hunchback last stream. Um, and we, we got it towards the end of the stream, if I recall. Or no, no, no. Good lord, I've lost my mind. We got the Hunchback two streams ago now. Sorry, I'm losing track of time. But yeah, it was uh, two streams ago. We got it from Salvage. And, um... Yeah, so we, we were we were playing around with some of the ideas, and I think I've got a decent plan for it. We're looking for one part, though. We need the cannon autoloader, or, or the, the cannon loader that lets you reload, like, per fairy cannons. And then, then the Hunchback Heresy will be complete. Uh, galleon, I think we're gonna hang the galleon back for right now, but I will bring them down the hill at least. And I'll, I'll consider moving them around up here, maybe try to do a flanking maneuver. I'm, I'm trying to now, now that we're out of the early game, I'm trying to use the galleon in its intended purpose as a scout. Oh yeah, for sure. Sway back all the way. I, I'm, I'm gonna put two medium cannons in it and we're just gonna shotgun people with it. 
because how else would you use a hunchback? Uh, Panther, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll move you up it. here as well. That PPC is definitely going to do the sniper. And now we can do the sensor lock. 45 ton mech. Let's see what we got. Okay. A blackjack. And looks like a baseline model blackjack. Well. Of a sort, anyway. So this guy's a tactician, which means he should know we're here. I'm a little surprised that they haven't started moving on us just yet. What can I do for you? And we got Stu. And, of course... Because we have sensor lock, and because they haven't moved, and because we have elevation, we we have 99% chance to hit. Which, of course, I'm going to take. But we're going to use the shape charge, because I don't see anything else. I'll save the HE for if they bunch up on us. So yeah, looks like Stu's going to get first blood. And there we go. Putting the herd on the blackjack already. And it looks like we do now have a support lance as well, so we're looking at potentially eight enemies on the field. Oh yeah. I mean, to me, I call a swayback anything that has big guns on both sides, but I know that's not the technical definition. Yeah, I would like to use a heavy cannon, but currently we don't have any. But if we can get our hands on some... It's it's not out of the question. Alright. Head serve. Dang it. We still don't have a shot. I still want to keep him up here on the ridge line. Uh, the head serve can take some hits. So I'm going to put him like right here in the ideal position. If this blackjack advances up this direction, we got him locked in. So let's see what else they're going to throw at us. Well, see, there you go. That's what happens when you go and put yourself out there on a ridge line. Ready to rock. Uh, let's see. We're just going to move up our, our boy here. Whiplash in his APC. It's not going to be super useful until we can get close enough to start using that tag. Still not picking up any sensor contacts besides this guy, so that's a little strange. So wherever the rest of their mechs are, they must be long range. I mean, as evidenced by the PPC slash LRMs that they just threw at the Hetzer. Yes, Commander. Um, again, we're going to have to go this direction to get down off the hill. But we've still got elevation on them as long as they don't advance. So I, I think we're still in good shape for the time being. Double time. Let's go. Ah, well, there we go. We found another one. In this case, it's a dervish. Um, we got good accuracy, and he hasn't moved, so he has no evasion. Um, yeah. Oh, shit! Bamboozle, welcome in. Haven't seen you in a little bit. And Devious, good to see you as well. Uh, but I think you guys know what time it is. It's, it's that time of the mission. It's time for full alpha. Confirmed. They are indeed us, Sol, and I'm glad to see it. So there we go. There's our first full alpha of the mission. First full alpha of the stream. And already Game Master's taking a bunch of hits. You do indeed, Bamboozle. Uh, if you weren't... Well, I know you weren't here for the, the impromptu stream on Sunday, but yeah, I actually... I got the notification late Saturday night that we had finally made affiliate. I say finally. We made affiliate, which is insane because uh, I did not expect that to happen as soon as it did. So, yeah. We, we are now affiliates, which means we have emotes. You guys can subscribe. I'm trying to do as much as I can to to up the stuff. So we got sub badges now. I put together one emote. I will be working on more, of course. But, uh, we're, we're, we're moving up in the world. We're moving up in the world. And like I told everybody on Sunday, thank you guys. Because you guys are the reason 
that we made affiliate. I'm just the streamer. You guys make the stream what it is. Alright, we got our trench bucket. Um, we could probably hang back, but I, I want to move a little bit closer. We'll go. Drive me closer. I want to hit it with my sword. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sierra! With the five gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. You do not have to do that, but I absolutely appreciate it if you do. Cannot thank you enough. Let's see, let's let's do a sensor lock on this blackjack, get rid of his evasion. Oh my. Oh my, the game is chugging there. What what the heck? Well that doesn't bode well. If the game's gonna chug that much on such a simple mission, I'm suddenly getting very worried. Alright, well that dervish basically just whiffed everything they threw at us. And the hunchy, of course, th th this is the disadvantage of the hunchback, and it's part of the reason that I want to put a larger engine core in it, is because by default, the hunchy is actually pretty slow. Yeah, lag, lag monster, lag boss is already showing up. Lag boss is the true boss that you have to defeat in Battletech. I think, I think we need to get Game Master out of there before he ends up biting the dust without getting to fire a shot. Because he seems to be drawing all the attention. And as if to prove my point, on the plus side, and it was not my intention to use Game Master as bait, but it's actually kind of worked out that well for us because we're getting to see all of the long-range weapons that the, that the enemy brought to the field. There you go, yeah. I, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll do this instead, Erst. We're just going to build a lance entirely out of urban mechs, and then we'll all just Cadillac our way to the battlefield. That's how we'll do it. But yeah, as, as far as why Game Master gets picked on, I think that's because they know that he's the biggest threat. You know, the, the guy who's out here making those 30% those shots from 1,500 meters away and one-timing light mechs. Like, yeah, if, if the guy I was fighting had a reputation like that, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely be scared of him as well. Uh, the Scorpion, I'm going to have to be a little more careful about how we use him. Uh, we'll have to be smart. Uh, so I think we'll move down here. Hopefully we don't give line of sight to a bunch of enemies. But I do want to put some hurt on this dervish, so we'll take the shot. As you wish. And we did get some hits, which is good. I mean, you have a point, Erst, but my strategy is is not let's bring X number of AC-20s. It's more an, a question of how many AC-20s can I fit in this land? It's kind of a personal challenge. Like, make, make the number as high as possible. Uh, no calamities just yet, Bamboozle. But again, this is only our first mission for today, so... There's always the possibility for disaster. But hopefully we don't find that today. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, if you're gonna give me the shot... I think we owe it to our friend in the dervish here to... 
once again give him the full alpha, although that's not much of a statement coming from a panther. I mean, first, I don't know if you were here for it, but I mean, don't forget that in the very beginning of this campaign, we got the commander blown up by an Irby with an artillery piece, so, uh... If I can't use an AC-20, I will be okay with a howitzer. I hear ya. And of course we got Stu hanging out in the back, which, I mean, 85% chance to hit, might as well go ahead and take it. Commencing alpha strike. We'll just, uh, we'll do our best front mission impression and we will focus down the enemies. I know there is a variant of the urban mech that has an arrow on it, I just don't remember... One, I don't remember the name of that variant, and two, I don't know if they have that variant in BTA. I know Rogue Tech has it, I just don't know if it's in BTA. Uh... Let's see, what's... You know what? Game Master has actually not taken as much damage as I thought. All his armor is actually looking pretty good. I am going to move him so he's not constantly taking all that fire. But we'll put him in the trees at least to get him a little cover. And of course, I mean, we have to take the shot. 92%? Punching all the buttons. Ah. That's a miss. Now that, that is a bad omen. If you guys have been around for a little while, you already know uh, Game Master has a little bit of a habit and he's either going to hit all of his shots or he's going to miss all of his shots. And the fact that he just missed a 92% shot makes me very, very nervous about how the rest of this day is going to go. Well, well, there you go. Thank you, Thanosi. Good to know. I, I know about the Thumper. We have seen the Thumper version of the Irby. I have not yet seen the Arrow 4 version in BTA. But good to know that it's a potential threat. That we could run into it in the future. Affirmative, Commander. Uh, well, I mean, we might as well take the shot with the tag. Then again, we do now have a new sensor contact. Is he in range? No, he is not. Well, dang it. In that case, screw it. Um, I think... I don't know, what do you think? Do we tang or do we censor lock? I mean, it's roughly the same thing. I think we censor lock. We get rid of the evasion pips. Because getting rid of the evasion, I think, will be more beneficial than just giving a, a small accuracy boost from the tag. Oh, speaking of trash cans. Um, I will try to, if I can remember. I wanted to show you guys some of the work that I've been doing on the trash can helmet. I, I mentioned this last time that one of the... One of the updates that I'm working on for my base model is uh, the OG trash can neuro helmet that I can wear whenever we're doing BTA streams. If I remember, I'll show you guys. I'll open up Blender and show you the work that I was doing on that. Uh, let's see. We got the Centurion. I think, uh, well, once again, we're not really in a position to get down from here. So I think we... Well, I mean, I think we do what we always do. We charge, and we full alpha. So yeah, here we go. Everybody, one, two, three, full alpha. Firing all weapons. Dang it. Taken a critical hit. Dang it. I was hoping we would get the knockdown on that, but that's okay. The turn isn't over yet. We still have an opportunity. I've been sensor locked. All right, here we go. Now the rest of these goofballs are starting to come out of the woodwork. Commander? So Sundance, again, Copy is just Commander. slowly waddling her way into combat. But that's okay, she'll get there eventually. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm curious what these are. We got a 45 tonner, we got a 50 tonner, and then we got another 50 tonner up here on the ridge. This guy scares me a little bit, because I think... I think this is the guy that was firing the goss at us, but it might have been a light goss. I'm not 100% on that one, though. I mean, to be fair, Bamboozle, I didn't expect the Howitzer Irby either. Again, I've, I've just sort of accustomed myself to only expecting Irbys to be a threat up close. So whenever I find myself in a situation where that isn't the case, I get very surprised. Um, I want to get the Treb into range... But I'm also afraid of these guys. I think at least two of these mechs will have a shot at the Treb. Which could potentially put us in the danger zone. I think we'll move up a little bit, but I'm not going to move all the way up to the edge. Try and give ourselves a little cover. So we got decent shots on the Dervish. We've got better shots on the Blackjack. Uh-oh. Did I lose you guys for a second there? Are we good? Okay. There we go. Yeah, I, I got a notification for just a second that it dropped. I'm not sure why, so. But if you guys are hearing me, then everything's good. But, uh, yeah, just based on accuracy, I think we go for the blackjack for now. 94% on the streaks is good, so hopefully we'll get a lock with both volleys. So, as always, full alpha. And, uh, yeah, we, we stripped quite a bit of armor with that one. Oh, yeah, for sure, Erst. If we could get a blackjack, I would not... I would not treat that. Holy crap! Alright, well I hope that was a rocket launcher and not an MRM, because that could become a problem. We might need to fall back from the ridgeline, because if they've got that elevation and range, uh, we might be in trouble from where we're at. So yeah, might might need to fall back a little bit. Okay, now so let's see, what it, what is our friend up here? Oh my. Chat. I think I just found our primary salvage target for this mission. I mean, how can I say no to a 6R Warhammer? I mean, I don't know where the hell this guy came from, because I didn't see a 70 tonner on the sensors. He might have come down the hill, but I think we just found our primary salvage target this mission. So yeah, that guy is priority number one, not only in terms of damage, like we need to take this guy off the field quick, but if we can salvage a Warhammer, mm, oh, that, that would be the best way to finish out the first mission of the day. Ah, uh, okay, I think we're going to reserve the battle armor. They're already taking some damage, unfortunately. But I think we're going to reserve the battle armor because if I can get the Centurion into a good position, we can jump the battle armor off. What I want to try to do, and I might be getting a little overzealous, but now that the Warhammer is on the field, what I want to try to do is get our battle armor on that Warhammer and tie it up. So I'm going to reserve them this go around, and I think we'll have to reserve them again. Oh no, we got Sparrow. Sparrow in the... in the Cursed Scorpion. Um, I think we move up here, maybe? And hopefully, yeah, the mechs in the valley will not have a shot at us. So, I think we're gonna put some hurt on this Warhammer, just to let him know we see him. I see you, buddy. And then we will reserve the battle armor again. Basically, I just need to reserve the battle armor until the Centurion can get into grips with the enemy. So we're going to have to wait through a few more initiative phases. 
Uh, in the meantime, I think Stu just continues to do Stu things, only this time we'll actually use the HE rounds because we got these two mechs in close proximity. And in fact, we'll go ahead and battle lord at the same time. Go for additional accuracy and additional damage. Because we're pretty much guaranteed to hit. So we got a good hit on the dervish, we also got some splash damage on the blackjack. And then Ozark with our Sniper Panther. Um, again, I don't really like the idea of moving up on the ridge line because we're exposing ourselves to a lot of fire. But we do still have some additional cover from the trees. So I'll make that work for now, at least as long as it's a viable strategy. And again, we're going to full alpha because that's what we do. Immediately take as much punishment to the dervish as we can. And he's already panicking. We've almost got him knocked down. So if we can put one more good hit on him, we might be able to knock him down. Uh, let's see. I think we'll move over here and take a side shot. I don't think... Yeah, we might be able to panic him. Residency, I don't think we do any stability damage with lasers. So we're not going to knock him down that way. Um, still got to wait a couple more initiative phases before we can actually use the battle armor. So we'll reserve again. And let's see who's up next. But I think we may be at the point where we're seeing all of the enemies we're going to see. Well, that's... Probably not good. Already got structure exposed on the Centurion. But let's see, we got five targets up here plus two targets down here. So that's potentially seven enemies. There may be one more that we're not seeing, but I think that might be close to um, all of our enemies. Aye, Game Master. You missed the last shot. Please, my friend, I need you to hit. Now, if we do hit this dervish, um, this is going to be a great hit for us because if you see here, like, almost all of his armor is gone, plus his stability is, is very, very low. So if we get this hit, we're either going to kill him or we're going to knock him down. Let's see how you like and we did get the hit, and there's the knockdown. And there we go. Got an arm destruction, and he punched out as a result of the damage. So that's one gun off the field. You love to see it. Good shit, Game Master. Back in form. You love to see it. Alright, we reserve the battle armor one more time. One more initiative phase. And then we should, hopefully, be able to get to grips with the enemy. I may have to abandon the plan to go after the Warhammer because the Centurion has taken so much damage and the armor is now breached. I think we're going to have to play a little more conservatively. Um, but that's not the end of the world. Number one, are we close enough? We might be close enough to have the battle armor jump down on this blackjack. Let's see. If we dismount... Yeah, we can absolutely dismount and swarm that blackjack. So I think that's the move. We'll tie him up. And uh, we'll, we'll get our rapid fire crowbar noises. And now I think it's going to be time to get the Centurion off of that ridge line because, uh, again, we're, we're taking a little more damage than I would like. Uh oh. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, that's not good. Not the least of which because we just lost the light gauze. So, uh, we just lost the majority of our long range firepower. And, wait, I'm sorry? Yeah, that's, that's an oof. That is an official oof right there. So 
So clearly we need to have a little more respect for this particular set of enemies. <laughs> Once again, uh, as, as our good friend Ian Dungeon has reminded us, Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Or as I've said of Battletech, overconfidence is a speedy and very blunt killer. Mm -hmm.